Welcome, Christelle, and thank you so much for being here with us today. Now, thank you, Ellen. I I know that EDF Group in general is a, a quite a large um, large company. You guys have been around for a very long time, but I was wondering if you could give us a little bit of an overview about who you are, um, some of the goals, and just really a, a quick overview of how you how you came to be here at the Hydrogen and Fuel Cells Conference. Um, yes, EDF is a huge. Uh, producer, uh, energy producer. We have a uh, lot of um, wind farms, uh, park. We have also solar parks and, of, of course, nuclear. Uh, we are locating worldwide in f different countries. And in fact, we come to, uh, to the hydrogen uh, market because we think that uh, um, hydrogen is a um, um, decarbonization vector um, uh, uh, to decarbonize, in fact, the economy. And that's why... Uh, as a low-carbon energy producer, we are thinking that EDF has a legitimate position to produce low-carbon hydrogen because of electrolyzers and because of low-carbon energy. Thank you. Um, and you guys are a, a French-based company, and there are many renewable resources that are available to you there, and I'll, I know you have a global presence as well. Um, could you speak a little bit about the renewables you are involved with and a little bit more... Why have you gone into hydrogen? At this point, uh, we all at the Hydrogen and Fuel Cells Europe area hope that that's the future, but right now, there isn't so much business uh, quite yet. So this is something for the future. So why are you heading that direction? So in fact, we are thinking that uh, hydrogen is not uh, uh, the, the future uh, anymore. It's the present. And um, we um, uh, are thinking that um, because of the electrolysis, and because of low carbon energy, we will uh, be able to uh, invest in generation assets by electrolyzers and refilling station. And in fact, we uh, launched uh, yesterday uh, Hynamix, uh, which is a new, uh, a brand new company um, uh, uh, within the group EDF. And uh, we uh, want, with this company, uh, to um, invest in um, new production assets of hydrogen, electrolyzers, and um, refilling station. Well, congratulations on the launch of the uh, new Hynamics brand. Uh, that's really an exciting time for you, and as CEO, I'm sure you're very personally involved with that. Um, so, C, or so, sorry, uh, Hynamics is obviously your hydrogen brand for, for within the EDF group. Uh, whereabouts are you hoping to focus, geographically speaking? Will this mo mainly be in France, or are you going more worldwide? No, in fact, and um, uh, I come back to your uh, um, last question. We will um, um, uh, address different markets. Uh, first of all, we'll address uh, industrial markets, industrial customers, uh, because we are um, think that um, uh, producing um, locally low carbon hydrogen by installing uh, electrolysis on site uh, is a, a, a competitive uh, advantage. And uh, we will also uh, address the heavy mobility uh, market um, and to work with the different uh, region and territories. And for that, we will, of course, um, uh, be um, located in the different uh, countries where EDF is producing energy. That means that we will be in France, for sure. We will be also in UK, in uh, Belgium, in Germany, but also in the U in, uh, US in the US, in uh, China, and uh, also in, um, uh, I forgot. Another place. Uh, in Emirates. With, res <laughs> with respect to the US and China, I mean, that's a little bit far from home. What brings you to those places specifically? Because, Ellen, we all have um, uh, generation assets uh, where th th that we own. Uh, we, own uh, we have uh, different um, wind farms uh, over there. We have also solar. Uh, for in the uh, uh, Emirates, but we have uh, um, offshore um, uh, also offshore assets that EDF uh, is um, uh, operate and maintain as um, uh, an owner. Okay, so you end up in these marketplaces as a result of um, pre-existing relationships. Yes, and um, we 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 see the connection between the renewable energy and the hydrogen. Of course, now if you want to produce um, uh, hydrogen on a low carbon basis, for sure you uh, can have different uh, opportunities with the generations that we own. 
um, we, we know that uh, to uh, have a performance uh, installation produced uh, with electrolyzers, you have to uh, have a, a, a duration, I would say, of the electrolyzers of a minimum of 5,000 hours to produce. Um, of course, uh, it would be difficult to connect uh, the uh, renewable energy due to this, uh, to this uh, fact. And that's why we uh, want also uh, to uh, be able to uh, progress and to perform the electrolyzers in a kind of flexibility and offshore and, of course, of a storage opportunity. Right. Uh, so, reaching the 5,000 hours for your electrolyzers from using only renewable energies, uh, what sort of sectors are you hoping to be within? Is this mostly remote types of locations? Are you doing this on small scale? Um, is there the, uh, the opportunity to be doing this on more of a large scale industrial setup? In fact, Ellen, both. We will, uh, as I just mentioned before, we will um, uh, address heavy mobility uh, market worldwide. I mean, in the countries that I mentioned just before. And uh, heavy mobility, that means trains, that means bus, waste management trucks, trucks, and also um, river and uh, ma marine uh, mobility. Oh, the river and marine is uh, especially interesting. Are, are you already involved in projects with those or have plans to be? And what, what areas is that going into? Yes, we... Um, uh, since we uh, developed the activity within the group, we developed um, almost um, uh, 30 uh, projects uh, in different countries, more in Europe than in the uh, countries in the, in the US or China. But we are involved in different projects. Um, some projects are uh, on a European basis uh, uh, subvention, but we also are uh, involved in uh, the project with uh, different OEM. Um, uh, that uh, uh, for marine, river, or also for, um, for the uh, heavy mobility as trains. Okay, I, I understand. Um, so you guys at EDF Group, are you're involved in many projects, but you're somewhat more of an enabler. You guys are not really making your own technology for the electrolyzers, is that right? That's correct, so in fact. So where are you, are you forming partnerships? Where are you getting the, uh, the technology from to be able to use and to integrate into the hydrogen sector? That's correct, Ellen. In fact, um, we, um, first of all, we will focus on the alkaline electrolysis because we think that these alkaline electrolysis are the most mature uh, technology. It's most mature, it's very durable. If you're aiming to reach uh, those higher hours of, um, of systems maintenance, it, the alkaline does seem to be a quite a good, good option for that. Sure, and that's why uh, in uh, my last year, we took a stake into a French company uh, called McPhee, uh, we put 60 million uh, in, uh, in, on the table, I would say, uh, about 21% uh, of, uh, um, of uh, the stakes. Um, and, uh, but that's not really the most important thing uh, by, by this action. We have signed um, a partnership uh, agreement, MOU, industrial, industrial and uh, commercial uh, agreement. And for that, we want to... Um, uh, to, uh, to do, um, uh, to scale, to scale uh, this uh, new technology, to perform uh, more uh, this uh, new technology. And that's why we have all the R&D um, uh, uh, entity of EDF, which is um, about 2,000 people. Um, and uh, uh, most of, um, a part of them are working on uh, uh, the electrolysis uh, alkaline. We are... Um, we don't have any uh, exclusivity with uh, McPhee. Uh, we don't want to have uh, exclusivity because we think that uh, we have to adapt the electrolyzers due to the different usage that we will address. Okay. So this seems like a pretty reasonable opportunity for companies such as McPhee and other uh, partnerships that are looking to do the electrolyzer uh, research and production. But from within EDF, where are the funds to make such investments really coming from? So for um, McPhee, it was uh, equity coming from EDF. And uh, for uh, Inamics, uh, we will invest in uh, different uh, installations. So we need, or we will need uh, some CapEx to uh, install this, uh, this generation uh, asset. And we will, of course, have this uh, uh, CapEx coming from the group as equity, but we also um, intend to, um, uh, to develop uh, and to structure 
uh, the uh, financing uh, the financing project, which which is uh, um, uh, um, something that is uh, uh, quite uh, um, uh, normal, I would say, uh, by uh, by EDF. So the model of Hynamics will be to be investor. That means that we will uh, be the owner of the different uh, assets, and then we will uh, operate and maintain the uh, electrolyzers and the refilling station um, uh, that uh, we will install. So it's really from development to EPC and then to supervise and uh, operation and maintain uh, the, uh, the, um, uh, asset, uh, uh, the assets. Okay, thank you for speaking a little bit about the, uh, the business model of Hynamics. Um, you mentioned the refueling stations. Whereabouts are those going in? For the refueling station, you mean? Um, for the, for now, <clears throat> and because of the partnership with, uh, with uh, McPhee, McPhee is producing, oh. is um, 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 uh, able to, uh, to, uh, to sell a, a refueling station as uh, uh, electrolyzers. So it's uh, the first step for EDF, jumping into this new uh, hydrogen uh, market for us because we are most located, focused, we were most focused on the generation of electricity uh, uh, or energy generation. But with this partnership, we can right now propose to our customers, industrial and territories, uh, customers, this uh, solution to decarbonize uh, their territory and uh, their, their process. Okay, thank you. Um, at this point, I'd just like to mention to the audience that if anyone has any questions, uh, just pop your hand up and I will bring the microphone down to you so that we can all hear it. Oh. If you wouldn't mind just saying your name and hold the microphone quite close. Sure. Hello. Hello. My name is Eric Feini. I have a question regarding the, the timeline on your project basis. You mentioned about the investments and the collaboration with McPhee, but uh, how does it translate in terms of uh, yeah, future projects implementation? So as uh, <clears throat> I said just, uh, since we um, <clears throat> decided to, uh, to uh, sign this, uh, uh, this partnership with uh, McPhee, we developed different uh, projects about 30 projects uh, in the different countries I mentioned. Um, the, the development, uh, the, 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 where we are in the, on the development is that we will be able to uh, install um, um, about um, less than 10 projects uh, in the uh, two next years, means probably the commissioning in 2021 or 2022. Okay, thank you for that question. Oh, another. Okay. Uh, Bertrand Velo, uh, I wanted to know what's the link with uh, iFair, uh, with you, which is your center, or you, your technology, technology, R and D center. Yeah. Thank you uh, for the question, and um, it's a good opportunity for me to mention uh, iFair. Um, Hydro that, that's uh, that's uh, real that hydrogen is not so uh, new for uh, EDF because we have uh, IFER, which is a common lab uh, with um, uh, Karlsruhe Institute of Technology. And uh, we have uh, uh, about 20 uh, experts, engineers, working uh, uh, in uh, IFER on that, uh, tech this uh, hydrogen technology. That means that they are working on the different technology of uh, alkaline, but also on the technology of electrolyzers concerning um, high temperature, and uh, they, they test the different uh, installation. And um, uh, they are uh, really involved also in different projects, proof of concept project, I would say, but uh, it's a real um, uh, advantage for EDF because, uh, and for Hynamics because we have a kind of uh, experience concerning these different POC, POC proof of concept that they installed um, in France, in Germany, uh, but also in other countries that, uh, where we, we want to, uh, to develop our activity. Okay, um, at this point, unfortunately, we're running a little bit short on time for more audience questions, so I'd just like to sneak in one last quick one uh, on the very the second day of Hynamics uh, existence. I know you don't have a long history as it's 
looks quite new, but what are your big goals for the future? What are you really excited about? Yes, uh, first of all, uh, I have a, a, a really great team, Dynamic, Dynamics, uh, and a very, uh, very uh, young team. Um, with Dynamics, EDF intends to uh, become a major actor in producing low carbon hydrogen and, uh, and to, be, uh, to have an important role uh, in, in, this, uh, in this market, market in Europe, but also uh, in China in, uh, and in the US. All right, that sounds, that sounds like a, an admirable goal for Hynamics. It's a great uh, challenge. <laughs> um, so at this point, unfortunately, we are a little bit short on time for questions, but I'm sure you'll be around today at booth D62-1. All right, so feel free to drop by D62 slash one if you'd like to continue the conversation. Christelle, thank you so much for being here with us today, and I hope you continue to enjoy your time here at Hanover Fair. Thank you very much, Helen. See you. <laughs>